I don't know anything about the afterlife as I haven't been there yet. Marina Abramovich. The call came in. A patient with altered mental status in need of immediate care. The physician's voice was muffled, seemingly disinterested. The location was unfamiliar even to the pilot. We plotted the course, loaded our gear, and took off. The flight felt interminable. The rural hospital building was tiny, and the town was a mere speck on the map. It resembled a clinic or nursing home, a ghost town devoid of life. As we landed in the empty parking lot, I couldn't help but imagine zombie-like creatures emerging from the woods, ready to attack. The silence was deafening. We let ourselves in, intruders in a deserted building. The dark hallway led to an empty nurse's station, the patient room shrouded in darkness. The only sign of life was a single nurse tending to a patient. The physician was out, but expected to return momentarily. My nurse paramedic, a fearless and assertive individual, took charge of the situation. One look at the patient was enough to understand the gravity of the situation. The patient's mental status was altered, moans escaping his lips in an erratic rhythm. The telltale rash was unmistakable, tiny purplish spots scattered across his torso. It was meningitis, an aggressive pathogen tearing through his body and brain. We knew the risks. This infection could be deadly, threatening us and our families should we carry the pathogen home. We donned masks and eye shields, advising the nurse to do the same. Prophylactic antibiotics would be administered to contain the monster. My nurse paramedic, a fearless and assertive individual, took charge of the situation. I prepared the paralytic drugs and sedation agents, a familiar concoction. Knowing the flight would be long, I opted for a longer-acting agent. I had complete confidence in her ability to secure the airway. She looked at me, a cocky wink and sly smirk playing on her lips, and quickly placed the ET tube. We requested high-powered antibiotics and steroids to mitigate the brain swelling. The physician still absent was a stark reminder of the physician shortage. This patient was critically ill and we had overstayed our welcome. I advised the nurse to take prophylactic antibiotics. We had all been exposed to a potentially deadly infection, likely meningococcus or pneumococcus. I suggested the ER doc do the same upon his return. The harsh reality was that there weren't enough bodies to care for everyone. Many hospitals were understaffed, staffed by physicians with little to no emergency medicine training. I applauded their efforts and their dedication in the face of overwhelming odds. This small rural hospital was fortunate to have a physician willing to step into the breach and provide coverage despite exhaustion and demands beyond their level of training. The nurse's apology echoed the toll the medical profession could take. The physician had been on duty for 48 hours straight, pushed to the breaking point. 